On the Friday prior to Easter each year, Christians commemorate the passion of Jesus Christ, remembering how he was falsely accused, condemned to death, and suffered on a cross. And while this concept may seem commonplace to our Christian practice, we know, of course, that Jesus suffered and died, it also presents an interesting theological question. Can God suffer? This is Catholicism in Focus. The most interesting thing about this question is that it's actually a fairly new one, or at least the debate surrounding it is fairly new. For nearly all of our history, really up until just over a hundred years ago, there was a complete consensus in the Christian world going all the way back to the early church fathers. And that consensus? No, God cannot suffer. The reason for this comes down to the very nature of God, namely God's immutability. Being that we believe that God is eternal, completely other from things that are created and wholly perfect, it only seems logical to assert that there is never a need for God to change. Why or how could a being that is already perfect become more perfect? Because of this, the Church declared in multiple ecumenical councils, including Nicaea, Fourth Constantinople, Fourth Lateran, and the First Vatican, that God cannot change. If God were to change, it would imply that there was something incomplete about God's previous state, calling into question the perfection of God. Accepting this, the Church then came to recognize a second attribute about God's nature. God is impassable, or unable to experience suffering. Since God cannot change without undermining the very nature of God's perfection, this means that God can also not experience fleeting emotions, be affected by the actions of something outside of God, and most importantly, experience pain or suffering. Again, if God is perfect, and certainly if God is unchanging, how could God experience pain unless pain were an eternal condition central to God's very being, which is not something we believe? So how does this relate to Jesus on Good Friday? Doesn't he suffer and isn't he God? For this, we must remember the dogmatic statement from the Council of Chalcedon regarding the nature of Jesus. Acknowledged in two natures, unconfusedly, unchangeably, indivisibly, inseparably, the difference of the natures being in no way removed because of the union, but rather the properties of each nature being preserved and both concurring into one person and one hypostasis, not as though he were parted or divided into two persons, but one and the self-same Son and only begotten God, Word, Lord, Jesus Christ." What? Essentially, Jesus is both human and divine, and there's no separating the natures. It's not like he's half God, half human. He is fully both, and yet these natures never mix or become confused with one another. If that doesn't make sense, join the club. We'll leave it to another video. Why it matters to us is that we can rightly say that the human nature of Christ, being subject to everything we are subject to except sin, experienced pain and suffering on the cross. But his divine nature, that which he shares with the Father and the Holy Spirit and being unmixed with his human nature, remained immutable and impassable, and thus did not experience pain. Fast forward to the end of the 19th century, and some theologians began to ask questions, like, given the immense suffering in the world, how can we believe in a loving God if our God can't even be in solidarity with us? The Bible is filled with examples of God acting emotionally and changing God's mind. Why is it necessary to read these passages analogously and not literally? And if God is truly imminent, present in the particular reality of time and space, how can God continue to relate to a changing world if God doesn't change? Finding inadequate answers to these questions in the traditional theology, some theologians of the past century have begun to critique if not outright reject the doctrines of immutability and impassibility. The most famous example of this is Jürgen Moltmann, a German Reformed theologian. Attempting to reconcile his faith in a loving God with the horrors of the Holocaust, Moltmann's seminal work, The Crucified God, places the cross at the center of theology. For him, God did not stand by idly as his son was slaughtered, nor did he remain unaffected by it. While Christ suffered the pain of physical torment on the cross, the Father suffered as well, not from physical torment, but out of compassion for his son. For Moltmann, this is how God is able to relate to our pain as well. As Catholics, what do we make of this? On the one hand, any movement this significant deserves our attention. Besides Moltmann, notable Protestant theologians like Karl Barth, Richard Bachman, John Cohn, and Alan Torrance have all questioned the impassibility of God in their work. And lest we think that this is a strictly Protestant issue, we have to acknowledge that Hans Urs von Balthasar, Roger Haidt, Elizabeth Johnson, Hans Kuhn, Raniero Cantalamesa, and John Sabrino 
theologians occupying all ends of the spectrum have as well. At the very least, it is a legitimate question that is worth thinking critically about. On the other hand, one has to question why there is such concern for God to suffer in the first place. While it may seem nice that God is in solidarity with us and initially be consoling, is it really? When we suffer, we're not consoled by the fact that someone else suffers with us, but rather that they love us and are able to change our situation. God can certainly do those two things better than anyone, regardless of whether or not God suffers. In fact, might it actually be the opposite of consoling to believe that God suffers? When we're suffering, don't we want to know that there is an existence out there that knows nothing of suffering? If God feels our suffering, it would mean that suffering is an eternal part of God's being, meaning that even when we die and enter God's everlasting love, there would still be suffering. And that's not very consoling at all. For this reason, the early church fathers asserted and the Catholic Church maintains today that God is completely unchangeable and without suffering. Despite modern questions to the contrary, these statements remain the official teaching. And yet, as the world changes and our understanding of God continues to grow, that doesn't mean that we won't find new ways of expressing this truth within the context of new questions. What theologians have done in producing this debate is not meant to tear down the church or its teachings, but rather to ensure that what we say and believe reflects the mystery of God as best we can. If our description of God leads people to think that God is distant and unable to relate to us, two statements that are absolutely false, it might be time to find new ways to talk about God. Thanks for watching this episode of Catholicism in Focus, made possible by the patrons on Patreon. And if you'd like to join the wonderful patrons like Drasko Dizdar and support this ministry of evangelization and catechesis, check out my Patreon page by clicking here or in the description. And of course, you can always join the mission by sharing this video with others.